Could you show us what a cello will look like before, like as a piece of wood before? Of Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is the piece which you use to make the ribs. So it's pretty heavy. I would say it has at least five kilos. Okay. And then it's cut it in thin slices. And these thin slices then will be brought on a thickness of 1.8, 1.7 millimeters, more or less, in the heath of the ribs of your cello. We uh, plane it by hand. We use a scraper and then we bend it around the bending iron, okay? And this here, I would say, how, how heavy is this? At least, let's say, 10 kilos, I would say. And this here is a nice maple. And this one becomes a cello how it is designed here. But actually, it has been growing like this. And many pieces together like this create one tree. Yep. Oh, okay. Just like this. And this has to be uh, uh, cut like this, okay? If you just would uh, cut the tree in slices, then you have only two pieces which are correct, and the other one would be slab cut. I didn't know that. I always wondered how they were cut. Yeah, then they wouldn't sound that good anymore. They're cut radially. Yes. Okay. That's also the reason why this kind of wood, even the spruce, immediately costs much more than if you use for the same tree for uh, construction, for the roof, or whatever. Yeah, Because it's from the very beginning, the tree has to be cut in the right way. I, I love this part. So we'll, this is a stencil, if you will. Um, you, who's drawn this? Have you drawn this? No, these are the ones who sell the wood usually. Oh, they sell it? Oh. Yes, they sell it. There's somebody who is uh, cutting the trees, Slicing up, you can't imagine how much work it is and how tough work it is. And you really, it's, it's, it's a different profession, you know. I love to go to the mountains to search for trees, entire trees. I did it myself because I'm interested. I made also a few mistakes, but it's a good experience. And you realize how important it is to rely on the uh, forestali, I don't know, the ones who work in the woods in that area, they have to know their pieces, they know which tree might be good for you to use. This is one thing I've always, I'm gonna step on my dog here, uh, one thing I've always been interested in is, so this is the front or back of a cello. This is the back. This is maple. This is the maple, the back, yes. Could you show us the front? Do you have a piece? Uh, I have, but not for cello right now, because I only have for violins. Could you show, okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So here, this is for a violin. You buy it actually like this. You choose it here like this. You season the pieces like this. And at the time it is ready to be used, this is now too fresh. It is here, it's from 2009. So yeah, 10 years, better to wait a little bit some more. Fresh, what do you mean? So a wood that's 10 years old, is no good. Yeah, you, you could do it. Premature? You know, the, the, the old masters, they actually, they, they took the wood from the same year, they cut the tree. Nowadays, people want to be sure that it is well seasoned, and that means at least 15 years. After that, you decide to make an instrument, you take this piece, you cut it in the middle, you open it, and then you have two pieces like this. Now I took just two pieces like this by chance, it's probably wrong. It's like this and then you can open it up and then you can join it and then you glue it together. Yeah. So even the top, even if you don't see it, there is always a joint in the middle. Okay. You could make it in one piece. But is then, that rare? How rare is that? No, is that better? It's not so rare. On violins it's not so rare. On cello it is. Even the cello the back can be made out of one piece, but then certainly the maple tree has to be extremely big and beautiful. So Mm. So what was this again? Spruce? Spruce, spruce, spruce. yes. Spruce. European spruce from Italy, okay? Uh, north of uh, Bolzano, Val di Fiemme. Very important Val di Fiemme because there is a valley. And in that valley... You're giving away uh, your secrets. No, it's not a secret. It's just, everybody should know. In the Val di Fiemme, there's constant wind blowing. Not strong, but easy going. And another additional very important detail in this Val di Fiemme is that the change of summer to winter and winter to summer comes from one day to another. And this for the growth of the wood, or let's say we in Italy we say the la pasta, the legno, the quality, the property of the material is very uniform. 
and the, the, the darker years are very thin. Are you saying that it's good to get wood from an area that has season changes that are sudden as opposed to yes, gradual? I think so. Okay. Uh, I was, at least, the, at the, least the, the, the great masters use this kind of wood. Okay. Then certainly in America there's another trend going on that, let's say if a tree is growing on a mountain, there's one side more exposed, so it gets a yeah, little bit stronger, that. and that part has very, very strong, dark years, and they believe that this is extremely good. I'm happy for them, but I, I think I believe more in simplicity and easy things. Instruments from Stradivari, Guarnieri, they have very uh, similar wood to the one which okay. I use, and I think instruments sound very good. I really love this, these things. I mean, yeah. coming to a real luthier who really builds cellos, you know, this is the beginning of a life of a cello, and eventually it becomes the back of a cello with the sides of a cello, which is just incredible. Hi everyone, I'm back in the studio, back to teach you the wonderful secrets and tips, tricks and all the other things that make this channel unique, making cello accessible to you. What you see right there is a wonderful loan from a friend of mine in San Francisco, so thank you very much. You know who you are. That is a Yamaha silent cello. We'll get to that in a bit this year. So really happy to be here. So check out the rest of this series. This is a series called From Trees to Cellos. It's a series I filmed in Cremona earlier this year. You're going to get other content from my visit with Edgar Rus. There's going to be much more of that coming up in the next couple of weeks. And it won't be until September we're going to get some more brand new content regarding the reviews on that and lots of other wonderful things. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And I'm back. See you all this year. I think I want to play that right now.